Hi, I'm Rahul and in this video we are going to learn how to train a dysentery in R. We're going to learn how to train and prune a dysentery and also tune the hyperparameters and plot. A dysentery is like a flowchart a diagram uh, that shows the, the various outcomes from a series of decisions. It can be used as a decision tool or decision making tool for research analysis and for planning strategy, especially for the business decisions. A primary advantage of using decision tree is that it is simple and easy to build, fast and also easy to understand or easy to interpret. So in this tutorial we are going to uh, uh, classify uh, diabetes, whether a patient has diabetes or not, uh, using decision trees. So uh, for this uh, tutorial, I'm going to use the following libraries, like the first library is MLBench for diabetes dataset or Primary Indian diabetes dataset, rpart for modeling the judicial tree, then rpart.plot for tree plotting or plotting the tree structure, and caret package for uh, generating the confusion matrix and other matrix such as for model evolution, and also the library metrics for different metrics like accuracy. So first we need to load the uh, diabetes, the data set. Uh, the diabetes data set has mainly consists uh, names uh, in, in this such ML bench package. It consists uh, consist of two data set, I guess, one for primary Indian diabetes and another is primary Indian diabetes 2. In primary Indian, uh, Indian diabetes such as 2 uh, data set, it has such a, the missing values, it is denoted with NA. And if you want to load the data set, you have to use the data argument and supply the name of the data set. First of all, you have to load the libraries. That is the first um, thing you have to do. Install those libraries and load those libraries one by one. Then load the data set using the data function and supplying the Pima India Energy Diabetes Search 2 uh, data set name. And if you load the data, it has 768 observations and 9 variables. If you see the data set, it has in many cases, uh, these are the variables and like pregnant glucose, pressure, tricep, insulin, mass, pedigree, age and diabetes uh, in positive or negative. This is a diabetes class. And some of the cases you can see the values are NA or now that is missing. So for training, uh, though decision tree can handle the missing values, still I would prefer to uh, remove those such values and then it make the model. So let's such first such familiar with the uh, variables that the data set contains. The pregnant, that is the number of times such a pregnant. Uh, then glucose, plasma glucose concentration, pressure, diastolic pressure, blood pressure, triceps, skin fold thickness, triceps skin fold thickness, and insulin, two hours serum insulin, mass, body mass index, pedigree, diabetes pedigree function, age in years, and diabetes. That is a class of positive or negative, uh, that is this column and for, uh, first uh, say uh, I want to save the uh, remove those such any values such to do do that you have to use the na.omit function and supply the pima india energy diabetes 2 uh, that is data set and I'm saving it is in diabetes raw because uh, uh, later we will let you modify those such a data I don't want to mess the primary data set so so we'll let you keep this data if we need that in future reference for future reference okay so save this removing the na values so if you the omit na then it has uh, three uh, the data or observation is now uh, from is now from 768 observation uh, now it has only 392 okay so it dropped the na values and the column is same nine column, nine variables and again i am omitting the uh, na values and saving it in a variable called diabetes that touches this variable or this data set we are going to use for its training okay so you can use the uh, glimpse function or str function depending upon your test uh, i like the glimpse function because it is structurally beautiful uh, so you can call this i haven't actually import the dplware package but this functionality is available in the dplware package so you can call the dplware package function with dplware with two colons and then it's a glimpse function and supply the this diabetes data set and it will plot uh, uh, or display the data set structure, uh, data types. Uh, so rows, uh, it has 392 rows and nine columns. And these are the variables, all are double. 
and few variable you can take it as category like it's pregnant one uh, but it has up to 13 categories it would be too many it will be too many categories such to model first of all so you can uh, keep it as such a continuous data and you can see the diabetes is in factor type okay so negative positive and before we start modeling uh, we have to uh, divide the data set into two parts one is train and another is uh, test data set the train is used for uh, training the model and test will keep keep aside uh, we'll once we'll get the final model or best model we'll try that uh, model on a uh, say unseen data set or test data set so once you will uh, when you st generate this uh, train and test using a particular uh, random sampling technique every time you will to run that uh, sampling technique or, or or generate those samples it will be very much different because you are using a random sampler so for that uh, if you want to reproduce the same results every time you run the code so for that you have to set a seed first of all so uh, here i'm setting a seed uh, using the set dot seed function and supplying a particular number here i'm supplying one two three if you run that seed and again if you generate the test and train and test samples then every time you will run using this seed it will generate the same so the result will be just also same for the train model if you want to predict uh, the test data and also check the accuracy it will be same every time you run with this such a seed setting the seed okay so for training here we are going to split the total uh, uh, total data into two parts uh, for from overall data set we take will take 80% for train and 20% for test so once you set the seed then we have to generate a random index Th that is very uh, old method I guess such so now you have the tidy models package which has uh, very simple functionality functionality is to generate a train and test but I will go with that uh, this one that is the old one uh, so First, you have to use the sample function and inside that you have to supply two that two means we want to generate samples of one and two okay and how many samples we want to generate then with comma supply the n row diabetes that whatever the number of rows uh, available in the diabetes column so uh, diabetes data set so 392 observation so it will generate one and two for uh, 392 observations and how many observations should be one I want to generate and how many observations I want to generate two. So with prop equal to in a vector you have to supply point eight that is 80% one and 20% two. This 80% one we will later use for identifying or assigning the train and 20% this 20% that is two uh, that is randomly generated or assigned based on this length of the data set uh, will be assigned for the test. So also yeah, I am using the replace equal to true so it will actually uh, generate the same index so that means it will also take the same data maybe multiple times because it uh, when when you uh, set this replace equal to true that means it will take the data from a constant source that means same sample can be retrieved multiple times okay so once you generate the index so if you check the index it consists, consists of one and twos one is more because it is 80 percent of times one and 20 percent times it has index two for the length of 392 again uh, we can use this index uh, uh, to index out the train data from the diabetes data set so diabetes with bracket we will use a comma before that we supply the rows and after that we column so for train data we are supplying the index equal to one that is related to 80 percent of the time okay so it will identify the index one data uh, from diabetes and assign to we are assigning it to diabetes train similarly index two for its test data okay so uh, these are the names of the data set we will use uh, when, uh, when we will let it started training the models and if you print the dimensions of the train data and the diabetes test data set you can see now the train data consists of 318 observations and nine columns and test data around 74 uh, rows and nine columns so let's just train our first tree based model or decision tree using the r part library so here using the r part 
in bracket or uh, in that our part function first use the formula where we'll give the what will be the formula so diabetes that is our diabetes such a column okay is predicted by this tilde function is known as predicted by after that we can supply this pregnant plus glucose plus pressure and the different independent variables but if you want all the variables except the diabetes that is how we are predicting then we have to supply a till uh, dot function after tilde so that means diabetes predicted by all the independent variables except diabetes and with comma then we are supplying the data that is our train data and method equal to class so it will uh, predict that class like negative or positive okay and we are saving this in diabetes model and let's just plot the model first so i'm using the r part h dot plot okay in this library r part h dot plot okay for tree plotting addition tree plotting so once we have to train the tree we can use the r part h dot plot and supply in the x argument diabetes model first uh, so let's plot then i will um, discuss about what this different argument such means okay so this is our addition tree so here in x in the uh, plotting function here supplied the model that we have trained this model then yes no equal to 2 that means yes no means yes or no at each level so at each level a variable is assigned based on the splitting condition and it will just uh, plot the yes condition to go left and no condition to go right okay and also we are supplying the type equal to 0 this type means draw a split level at each split so here a split level split level and node level at each leaf so here is the node level at leaf conditions okay and also the extra information is zero we, we don't want any other information okay so next task is to once we have trained the model we have the model and now let's say this is the good model uh, say my assumption is this model is good and I want to check how it will let you perform on an unseen data set or a test data set. Uh, that data set this model has never seen. Okay. Or uh, this uh, model has never seen before. So we want to test that. How accurate this model is. So the first is uh, we'll, we have to use the predict function. Inside that we have to use the object where first you have to give the trained model. Then with new data argument, we have to give uh, the uh, diabetes uh, underscore test. That is our test data. O using this model, we want to predict our the our classes or negative or positive of the uh, test data. So we supply in new data the test diabetes test data, and type equal to class. So that means we want to predict the class like negative positive. If you supply the probability here, then prob. Okay, so it will uh, then provide the probability for uh, negative or positive class. Okay but we don't want that we want only the prediction in negative or positive for each uh, observation okay and we want to save this in a class predicted if you run that and see this now you can say this is this is the positive or negative class it's not probability why we want this class because we want to match this such a class against original diabetes such a test data set uh, diabetes column of class of different edge class like negative positive uh, each row and see whether the predicted positive is equal to uh, whether the here for first observation it is predicted positive whether in actual data set test uh, test data set it is actually also positive or it is a negative so we want to match that for predicted class and for actual class in the test data set so we can do that using a uh, confusion matrix such a function that is available in the caret package you can call that as package use um, call or load the library caret and use the confusion matrix inside that first you provide the data that is a class predicted whatever is the prediction we have made right now you, on the test data set then in reference level or originally what it exists actually in the test data set so in reference diabetes test dollar the diabetes column so whatever the class we have predicted versus whatever the actually existed as a class in the diabetes test data set if you plot this confusion matrix then it will this is the reference and this is the prediction so reference originally it is negative and also has a predicted negative that is 39 so actually it is true negative and originally positive and predicted also positive is 18 so it is true positive and uh, originally it is such a positive but predicted as a negative 
so falsely saying it is negative so it's false negative 9 and another case is originally it is negative but it's predicted or falsely saying it or falsely predicted positive 8 so it is a false positive okay so total correct uh, classification is 39 plus 18 and total misclassification is 8 plus 9 okay so next we can also check the accuracy same way uh, it also this uh, matrix confusion matrix function also provide the accuracy 77.03 percent also the confidence intervals then kappa sensitivity specificity and different other matrix are there so here we are going again we can check the, using the accuracy function from the matrix package where actual we are supplying the actual classes of the diabetes test data set the diabetes column and the predicted predictions so it will give the accuracy that is same 77.02 or 03 next comes the comparison part and like this kind of model has different hyper parameters that we can tune and it, the model performance will improve or the uh, prediction accuracy will improve so one of the uh, basic uh, hyper parameter it uses such as the splitting criteria for its classification case there are different splitting criteria like guinea information gain then misclassification and for regression it is where usually the common one is variance reduction okay so let's such a first such a train with such a two different splitting criteria and see whether the uh, there is any difference in the prediction accuracy so again we can use the same functionality just we are supplying here the params argument with a list split equal to guinea for the first edge splitting criteria at each node how it will split first we are selecting the guinea based guinea index okay criteria and saving in the model one diabetes model one next we are supplying uh, the information gain criteria okay or splitting criteria and saving in the diabetes two same way, way we will predict the test data set using the first model that's the guinea based model and saving in the prediction one and for the information based edge model the prediction we are saving in prediction two Again, we can check the accuracy for the guinea based model that is 77.03 and for information based model it is around 75.67. So for guinea based model it is such a giving accurate edge prediction, more accurate prediction. We can plot the guinea based edge index such a best edge model. Uh, so this is the same model we have earlier edge plotted because by default it uses such a guinea based edge uh, splitting criteria. Next is such a tree pruning or uh, because uh, in dysentery the most uh, uh, problematic thing is uh, overfitting overfitting means uh, like sometimes the tree structure is so deep that you can't uh, interpret it properly or uh, it increases the complexity of the interpretation also the complexity of the trees so at some time you need to prune the tree like cut the tree at particular level to simplify it without uh, losing the performance of the tree okay so maybe here at that level you can cut the tree or at that level you cut the tree where it will let you maximize the accuracy or minimize the error so for tree tree pruning we need to obtain a particular uh, complexity as a parameter based on which we will prune that okay so that is also known as cost parameter here so uh, the model once you train a model it has such a uh, uh, particular complexity is a table okay so if you use the plot cp function and supply the model say our the best model diabetes one based on the guinea index so you can check this uh, at x-axis this plot gives in x-axis the cp cost parameter in y-axis the error relative error and this is the tree size in the upper axis so where this dotted line is cuts corresponding this value is the minimum one like 0. Point, um, say it is 1 4 or 1 5 or something like that it should be here so we can identify these values using the cp table so you can use the diabetes such a model uh, one and use the with dollar sign call the cp table and print that the cp table will give you cp in a split relative error x error and x std okay so here in x error if you check it has minimum error of 0 0.74 with the cp value of 0 0.0258 for this cost parameter if you supply this cost parameter 
it would it will have, have a minimum error for this tree if we prune at this such a cross parameter so, okay so we can identify at which index at the x this column for x error it has such a minimum error we can use the diabetes such a model one data set with dollar we with dollar we access the cp table and from that we select the x such error column and this supply under a which dot mean function so it will identify the index at which it is minimum so if you check the index it has three three that is row three and column three so one two three this row and one two three this column so at this it has minimum error okay so if we supply this such index also inside the uh, diabetes model dollar cp table and supply at row this such index and the cp column from that it will add that index it will identify okay the particular is a cp value so if you run that and check the cp optimal it will provide that this value 0 0.025899 0 okay so for pruning you can use directly use prune function supply the tree that is our model model one diabetes model one based on gain index and with cp parameter you will supply this cp optimal argument that is optimal value and we are saving this optimal model in the diabetes of model one optimal and if you plot that to model now you can see it is much simplified like for a question let's say whether the my glucose level is less than 180 128 say no i uh, it is more than that so we are going to write and whether my age is uh, more less than 25 no say i am 30 years old so i have more likelihood of or uh, having a diabetes higher likelihood of having diabetes i uh, usually so it is positive and in other conditions it should be negative okay so if you check the prediction of this uh, final optimized model uh, you predict the class and check the accuracy it has still 77.03 percent accuracy without uh, even the tree you have pruned uh, still it ha haven't to lose its uh, uh, accuracy okay so consistent accuracy even after pruning so it is easy to interpret and also you are getting the similar accuracy so next uh, we will uh, do hyperparameter tuning so there are other hyperparameters like depth of the tree split conditions and like uh, uh, split condition guinea or say uh, information criteria then minimum sample uh, or mean splits just samples so how much sample should be here so that a split condition uh, is per uh, can be performed okay so we are taking two things one is mean split the minimum number of observation that must exist in a node in order for a, uh, performing a split okay and max depth up to how much depth it will grow okay so we will try up to 20 say uh, we are using here to generate a sample for sequence using the sequence so from 1 to 20 at an interval of 1 so it will generate 1 2 3 4 the mean split and similarly for max depth 1 2 3 4 up to 20 okay so once you run this it will generate these two sequences you can check that up to 20 same up to 20 and we need to create a combination of these two like mean split one and max depth one two three four up to twenty mean split is a two and max depth up to one two three four like up to twenty so you can create a combination of this using the expand rod as a grid function and here we are creating a mean split by supplying the mean split this vector and mean depth uh, max depth using the max depth and we are saving this in hyperparameter grid if you check the hyperparameter grid it has 20 into 20 that is 400 combinations of these hyperparameters so up to 400 okay so next uh, first just save the length because we want uh, want to create 400 models to identify which one is the best uh, with a particular hyperparameter combination so we are saving the length of the um, uh, grid uh, so n we can use the n row number of rows uh, and supply this as a grid object it will save the number of models that we want to build uh, or 400 models so uh, 
we need a for loop to iterate through 1 to 400 of this two uh, hyperparameters and train 400 separate separate models and we want to save those models in a particular uh, data structure so we will use here the list for saving those models and we create a will create an empty list and save in the diabetes models okay next we will you iterate through a for loop so for i in one two number of models that in number of models is 400 so it will iterate one to 400 and for i index first it will go for one then i index it will go for two and three like that okay so again we will use the uh, hyperparameter grid from dollar sign we will select that mean split and index out the ith index okay for say one when it iterate iterating using for loop and it select one then it will select the index one minimum split and save in min split and index one uh, max depth from the hyperparameter grid and it save in max depth next what we'll do we'll use the same r part uh, function for training the model again the same formula for diabetes predicted by all the independent variables except diabetes and then data is diabetes trained method is class then we supply this as a mean split that is for ith index here mean split and for max depth it is max depth then saving the model at ith index of this such list that is the diabetes model okay so if you iterate it will train the model it will take time little bit time yeah if it is done let's say we want to check the 50th model so from the diabetes models we will select the using double this bucket you can uh, index a particular uh, list uh, particular list element uh, say we want to retrieve the 50th element of the uh, model from the model list so 50th model you can print you can uh, you can print this model uh, and it, this is the model split root and other different splitting group uh, stages and we can plot this model this 50th model and this 50th model has to look like this okay so next thing is we have trained the 400 models and we want to also check accuracy of each model on the prediction uh, uh, on the test data set of each model each form up to 400 model will test on the test data set and check which model giving the maximum accuracy on the test data set and then we'll retrieve at which hyper what hyper parameters that such a best model has uh, that means the that such a hyper parameters will give the or maximize the accuracy okay so again uh, i'm saving the length of number of the models that is 400 because we will iterate uh, up to 400 okay so again i'm creating a vector accuracy values uh, empty vector so we'll store the accuracy in this vector once we'll just test on uh, or predict the test data set and check the accuracy okay so again we are iterating through using a for loop i one to number of models that is one to 400 now from diabetes model list we are taking the ith index model and saving in the model and next we are using the predict function and supplying the ith index such a model to this model and new data the test data that is test and type is class we are predicting the class we are saving in the prediction next we are taking the empty vector and at empty vector ith index we are saving the accuracy that we are calculating from the actual data that is diabetes under diabetes data set the diabetes column and the predictions that is a predicted equal to print that we have predicted so let's search first to run this uh, the empty vector and then the for loop now predictions is saved inside uh, predictions are saved inside this uh, accuracy values okay so uh, if we want to retrieve which model having its which model is providing the most accurate uh, predictions okay so we can what we can do we can uh, index out those on that model so in diabetes such a models we have the 400 models saved inside that we are indexing using the which max we are using the function in the in, inside for indexing we are using using this which max function and inside which we are providing the vector in which we have saved the predictions ac accuracies of that 400 models so it will identify at what index of this uh, accuracy to value vector that, that has all the accuracies at what index it has maximum accuracy 
at that index it will identify uh, it will retrieve at that index it will retrieve the diabetes best diabetes model and save inside the best model so if you use the best model uh, and use it with a dollar sign supply the control statement then it will identify uh, that will it will then it will print uh, different hyperparameters it has like we have based on the mean split conditions uh, that we have supplied in the hyperparameter for 17th mean split at 17 uh, uh, mean split of 17 and uh, maximum depth around 6 i guess uh, we have provided 1 to 20 so at max depth 6 it is it has such a maximum prediction accuracy on the test data set so let's search, check the predictions again we are predicting and also checking the accuracy so now the accuracy is 81 percent from uh, last accuracy i guess 77 uh, and now uh, with this hyperparameters uh, this uh, hyperparameters of uh, mean split 17 and max depth 6 it is providing a 80 percent astronomy h accuracy on the test data set and now you can plot that and this is the best model such as a tree st structure so uh, for example say if you want to interpret it like say whether my glucose is less than 128 no then go to right whether my age is less than 25 no go to right whether my glucose level again less than 155 no okay like this you can go okay but or if it is such a less than actually then go to yes and you will reach to the leaf node positive or negative it will give the class the prediction so it is providing around 81 percent accuracy so it is quite a bit it's a very good model so this is how we can uh, train a uh, addition tree we can prune it we can hyper uh, tune hyper parameters and we, are also, uh, we can also plot for uh, the decision making usually it is used uh, for a research um, analysis or business decision making tool because it's very easy to interpret just go to left or right based on a particular uh, variable condition a split condition so this is uh, uh, so uh, thanks for watching and in next video i will also uh, preparing some other videos and this is also available in my uh, medium blog you can follow there uh, or read there thanks for watching